Oh, hey, I'm Coco, and welcome to our talk show, Single and Too Tired to Mingle. We'll be talking about relationships with ourselves, our exes, our kids, and other important beings. So stay tuned. Elisa, welcome to today's uh, episode of Tuesday Talks. Amazing. Thank you for having me, Coco. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to host you. And Elisa, you are a singer and a songwriter. So we're going to be talking about your life story today. Yeah. And you're originally from Latvia. I am from Latvia, yeah. So I'm very curious to know how someone from Latvia comes to London and has an amazing career like you. Mm, I guess, like, to be totally uh, transparent, my parents gave me the opportunity to come to a boarding school in the UK. So I came here by myself with no family at 13 and graduated. Is that something that you wanted yourself? or Yeah, I mean, when I went, it was the time of Harry Potter. Right. So boarding schools were all the craze, and um, my stepdad's elder children had gone to other schools, so it was kind of, it, f it wasn't unusual okay. at that time. Um, and they had the opportunity and the money to send me, so they did. Okay. And I did four years in a UK schooling system doing GCSEs and A-levels, and then I went to higher education. Okay. I studied music and technology in... Norwich at University of East Anglia and then around about the time that I was about to graduate my parents came into some financial difficulty and they said after you graduate you have to come back you wow. know they didn't even come to my graduation no way. because at this point they couldn't afford the flights wow. so things turned very quickly from boarding school to kind of them really trying to figure out how they're going to make it work with having two younger children so I was left to my own devices and they said the only way we can help you is if you move back and I just had finished my bachelor's. I was only 20 years old. And I said, no, I want to go and do a master's and I want to have a life in music. And to have a life, a career in music back home in Latvia is difficult. The market is a lot smaller. The opportunities are a lot smaller. And well, it's not a global market. It is a smaller internal market with a language that is spoken by only 3 million people. So I had all my sites were always for the bigger stage. Okay. Um, and so I moved into my friend's mom's house who was going through a divorce. Right. And she kindly let me lodge with her. I paid very little considering like run London rates for rent. And I got two jobs, one at a pub and one at a tele sales. And I started my master's and I funded it myself. Wow. And I just got stuck in <clears throat> because I knew that going back wasn't an option. Yeah. And through doing my master's for half a year, part time, I realized I needed to take a year out because it was so financially draining. Right. And in that year out, I got a job in Canary Wharf. Okay. <laughs> in tech. Where we are today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm always back here. Yeah. I always come back to Canary Wharf. <laughs> and um, that was different. Mm -hmm. Very different. I felt that I was really objectified right. by the men in the companies that were working near me like oh, for example it was a it was a floor but it was a what do you call them so what were you doing what were you working at i was an office manager for a tech startup right. that tried to create paperless tickets for trains and okay. transport systems it was funded by innovate uk it, at the time it was called multipass mm -hmm. and it was super interesting i found tech very interesting because it is very innovative yeah and for example, like next door to me in my hot desk, it was like Revolut at the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So it was like, you know, now some companies yeah, have done amazing nice. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because I was an office manager, yeah. I'm not an engineer. And I was also 21, 22 yeah, at the time. Yeah. I found that that environment wasn't the most accepting of me or the most confidence building. And in fact, it was kind of like I was a tourist. You know, in so this, what, they didn't take you seriously. Because they didn't you take me seriously because I'm a woman, because I look, because I'm good looking, <laughs> and because maybe because they could see I didn't give yeah. too much of a okay. shit about being there. It was okay. more about like it was a, a part of my life. But I'm grateful for it. Okay, so that funded your studies and your one of my studies. But we want to know how you became. Okay, fine. London is a global stage, correct? Yes. But it's very, very big. It's very competitive, and everyone from the world is here. So whilst it's a bigger market, it's also much harder to make it. 
So tell me your story. How did you come into your singing I, and songwriting? I was working at this time now. I met, moved from financial tech into AI. Right. I was working for an AI company and they were music based. They were building an okay. AI composer. So I was now back at university doing a part time master's, working full time as an operations manager for an AI tech company. And I bought my first microphone and I started recording really bad songs, really terrible songs by myself in my bedroom in Canada, Walter, where I lived at the time. <laughs> and little by little, I was able to um, convince other people to do sessions with me. So producers and other things, okay. people that weren't famous or nothing like that. They were all independent like me. And I think little by little, as I started showing songs and things on the Internet, I was very lucky to get the attention of people quite quickly after releasing my first single in 2019 called and red okay. and then in 2020 i released a mixtape called iron curtain golden pussy okay because i'm eastern european <laughs> <laughs> so let's make it be known <laughs> so let's make it be known and i thought that like with um back home i grew up with this vision of like a good woman looks like the girl next door yeah a good woman doesn't ask too much Mm -hmm. she doesn't show too much mm -hmm. and it's all very contained around what a good woman is yeah and very stereotypical very yeah. and i think that other women around the world can relate to it sure. so it's not just an eastern european yeah. thing uh so iron curtain golden pussy is that the iron curtain they're just trying to hide how much power women have mm -hmm. they're just trying to isolate us so i released this mixtape in 2020 and shortly after in September, I did some work with a female producer called Laura, who changed my life because she put me on a record. She heard my stuff, oh, nice. really liked it. She was like, come do something with me. I did something with her. And that year, I'm going to guess this is 2020, yeah, November, Idris Elba called me. Oh, nice. Because someone that had once seen me at an open mic in Peckham in London called Naval, shout out Naval, um, and put I my name. These kids, actually, because I'm a tennis coach in my spare time. So oh, amazing! Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love that. There we go, small, small world. <laughs> Literally, you know, and um, because I haven't actually met his kids, but I have met his, Savvy, his wife. Okay. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Idris. That's Shout out the ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, I jumped on one of Idris's tunes, and obviously nice. that was when stuff really changed because people back home didn't get it yeah. and now I had done something in the larger media scale That's with it. this massive celebrity and everyone goes oh maybe you're serious then mm -hmm. uh, of course that doesn't change everything because it is one feature one song with someone massive that can't create your life yeah. but I think there have been like multiple turning points where I have had some luck because I do think like half of it is your consistency correct but then a lot of it is luck how, why did he find me? Why did Naval watch me at an open mic before I had any of my own music? And she remembered me yeah. and then put me in his, um, uh, you know, potential options for a feature on that record. Um, so did the Idris Elba one. Time passed. I worked on some other stuff. Idris actually El Elba signed one of my EPs to his um, record label, Seven Wallace. Good for you. And... I kept working a lot in sync. Sync is basically the music term for music for advertising mm -hmm. um, and for commercials and things yeah. like that. I started working really heavily in that because it is such a big part of the market in terms of like how musicians and artists and producers actually make money. Okay. Unless you have a song in the top 40, those radio plays don't add up to too much. I think like the BBC, I might be wrong, but the BBC play about 50 pounds per play. Right. So split between me and me as a producer and artist or whatever, it's 25 pounds each. Yeah. And then you take the label takes a little cut. So yeah. maybe we end up with like 20 pound a play. Yeah. And unless you're being played every day, a couple times an hour, mm -hmm. there's no way you can make money in recorded music, which is why record labels exist. They're yeah. um, marketing infrastructures and they're banks. Whereas with sync, you can make a piece of music that gets used by a brand and they pay you a much larger fee all in one okay. for a certain amount of time. In 2021, I wrote a song still online at home with a producer via Zoom, and that got synced to a FedEx in January 2022. Okay. And then in 2022, in October, which is my birthday month, I got an Apple ad. And that kind of obviously meant that I never had to go back to doing any other work. Wow. And it just meant that I could focus my time on doing 
advertising music, but then also art music, um, go on tour and things like that. It is not a straightforward game. Yeah. And the truth is that a lot of these amazing stars that are coming up now and they're like, how, where they've come? They've been signed since they were 15. Like, so even it takes if, that long. It takes that long, yeah. And like, if you think about the Brits uh, Awards, yeah. they're named after the Brit School, which is a performance and music school in South London, oh, I no think. Way. Okay. So I there's a lot of channels through which very talented people get found and given resources to continue on their creative endeavors. But if you are a little Eastern European girl, um, and you don't have a lot of protection or a lot of um, community here, you have to fight harder and you have to figure out what's worth it. Am I going to put all of my energy into hoping that a record label signs me and someone at the record label says, yeah, she's going to be great. I'm going to make her a star. Mm -hmm. And I took the independent route and focused the half of my time on making advertising music, which is less glamorous. Yeah. But it meant that I don't have to take yes or no from somebody That's it, yeah. so I think it is for me a lot about regaining in independence through understanding your business right not just being the best at it or getting some kind of momentum through one big specific event I think with all of us our life success is like loads of little events that eventually but all add up I guess right yeah sure it wasn't just luck like luck I think you always have to have that element of luck in life as well yeah. I think you work hard so the harder you work the luckier you get so I guess mm -hmm. it's actually the saying right exactly so it's good the hours add up the hours add up so tell us about your tour you said you went on tour I went on tour in the summer of 2020 with Rudimental they did a small tour around the UK I met um, Piers and Kezi and the boys from Rudimental uh, I think the beginning of 2022 and we wrote some music together and now it's finally been signed and it's coming out next week. Not next week, next month. <laughs> I'm too excited. I'm like, next yeah, week, yeah. I want to <laughs> exacerbate the time. Um, <laughs> oops. And, it, and it's coming out through um, the same Naval who put me in front of wow. Idris. She's now working for um, a label called 360 that's owned by Pete Tong and Calvin Harris and has a lot of really cool people that are working in it with it. Uh, and it's an independent label. So I think it's still relates back to my independent mindset and it's been a long time uh, of negotiation and just in general making sure I have the right support and the right team around me because I'm a creator you know I'm I, I make music say, do you negotiate yourself or do you have someone negotiating I have a, I have a fabulous lawyer but I do understand it enough to know what my parameters are and what matters to me and what doesn't so whether it's the time or length of money or whatever it is uh, the percentages, what they take, you know, there's so many little things and I don't oversee it completely because a lawyer is important yeah, in this space, sense, yeah. especially yeah. when dealing with them, um, international contracts and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think music and business is very interesting to me. One part that I did miss out accidentally was a while when I left working for AI I actually started in a music management company wow. so I toured some of Europe with a South African artist called Moonchild Sinelli and I worked there for about a year and then COVID happened and obviously touring and live yeah. stopped so <laughs> I needed to re jig my yeah. situation yeah. but um I've always been very interested in the middle of music and business and totally understanding how it works and I think that that has helped me in my career because I've started to understand how money comes from where it goes how it flows who makes the decisions why they make the decisions <laughs> like um yeah so are you gonna uh continue having your own little label or? I do I have a little label called Mananaba okay. which means um my belly button in Latvian okay <laughs> because I think that there are female lineage and the power that we get from our mothers should never be forgotten mm -hmm. and I love my mother very dearly and she's sacrificed a lot in her life to give me the opportunities that I have and she has fought for me and things so okay. I think calling my label my belly button in my own home language like my mother's tongue is a way of celebrating Sweet. recognizing that lineage and that power and also knowing that I am a global child yeah. you know I'm living in London yeah and in some ways I'm much more British than I think and you know my partner's British and I love being here London is my home yeah. but I'm also Latvian mm -hmm. and it's okay to be both yeah absolutely. and um I think being 
Latvian living in London and having to chew through a lot of the fat that was remaining from the social values back of back home in the 90s and early 2000s and working through that. But then realizing that back home, there's other people who are like me, too. You know, they might just not live here. Yeah. And that an identity of a country isn't just what was the predominant fashion yeah. or the per um, the, the permitted behaviors. It's yeah. anyone can be. I think anywhere. London is so global as well. Once you're here, you have the whole world at your feet, really. So and you get, everyone comes from somewhere, I think. So it's kind of like a nice mix of yeah. uh, every race, every color, every country. So And you learn so much from yeah. other people, you know. You become very open-minded, I think, to a lot of things yeah. that you don't, especially in maybe Eastern European countries. You're yeah. very um, uniform. <laughs> it can be uniform, yeah. but to their own detriment. And yeah, often you see true. that when they travel out or have experiences that they might have been guarded against, once they actually experience them, or other cultures, or other food, or whatever, mm -hmm. their barriers break down yeah. and they, they let the love in. But it's much easier here because, it, like you said, it's a global melting pot, yeah. but back home is not. So what advice, to kind of to end this lovely conversation with you, would you give to young hopefuls or up-and-coming girls, maybe specifically, yeah. uh, that want to break into the industry like you have? Study the greats. Yeah. But know that your true power will come in your consistency and in how deep you delve into your strengths and your assets and do your own shadow work. Yeah. We all don't have to be the best singer, dancer or something. There will always be somebody who's better at something. But by making yourself as well-rounded and also as refined as possible and just working on your craft seriously, putting all those tens of thousands of hours it will lead you somewhere beautiful. And it might not look like what you think, but allow the process. Yeah, just allow the path to happen. Elisa, thank you so much thank for you, all Coco. this today. It was such a pleasure hosting you. <laughs> <laughs> Impromptu. Yeah. Just tell us for the end, uh, what single are we uh, listening yes. out for? Yes, yeah, so um, I have an EP coming soon, but the first single of that EP is called Come Roll With Me. It's drum and bass, and it was produced by my friend Slim, my friend Piers and Kezi, who are of uh, rudimental and it just means the world to me come roll with me is this song all about actually telling people that they can be on your side they can be on your team it's about building longer tables not higher fences mm -hmm. and breaking down the gatekeeping so yeah come roll with me coming out in may 2024 amazing i'm getting goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you <laughs>